Hello everyone, welcome back to Disturbing Humanity. I am your host Jess and it is great to have you here. So today, just before I get into what I'm going to talk about and you already know what it is because of the title, I just want to advise viewer discretion because I'm going to be talking about some very, very disturbing things in this video and you should know by the title of my channel that it's going to be disturbing. So. Um, if you are going to be triggered by me talking about the death of babies, then don't watch this video because this is what it's all about. So yeah, some of these are very heavy and a lot to take in, so I just wanted to let you know before I get into the stories. So without further ado, let's get into three disturbing cases of neonaticide. Now for those of you who don't know what the word neonaticide means, it basically means a parent killing their child in the first 24 hours of their life, not to be confused with infanticide, which is after that, any time after 24 hours to, I think it's like one years old. But we are talking about uh, mothers that killed their newborn babies. So. Starting off, we have Tiona Rodriguez. In 2013, Tiona Rodriguez, who was from New York, was a young mother who gave birth to a baby boy at the age of 17. She reportedly took a bag and a change of clothes and went into her friend's bathroom and gave birth, ripping the umbilical cord with her bare hands. He lived for several minutes before he was asphyxiated by Tiona, who then cleaned up after herself, leaving no sign of what happened in that bathroom, and put the baby in a bag and proceeded to go shopping. She went to Victoria's Secret and was arrested by a security guard who thought that she was shoplifting, and upon searching her bag he noticed a foul smell and discovered the tiny body of her newborn baby. Before she was caught, she had sent a text to her friend saying, take this shit, dig a hole, put it somewhere, lol, then we go eat IHOP. She was then sentenced to 16 years in prison for the murder. <sighs> you know, it's just one of the most fucked up things I've ever heard, how she could just say lol in a text about killing her child and putting it in a hole. I I have no words for that, honestly. It's just so beyond fucked. According to prosecutors, Rodriguez was a serial pregnancy hider and had managed to hide at least three pregnancies from those around her. It is believed that she killed another baby that she had around a year before this one that she had given birth to in her bathtub. Rodriguez insisted that the baby was stillborn, but texts were uncovered that she'd sent to her boyfriend throughout the birth, saying, it's dead, and then discussed getting rid of the body, conspiring to smash it up so it didn't look like a body, or burning it. She also did have a child that lived that she gave birth to when she was 14, but that child is thankfully with their father. So, um, yeah, that's that one. You, I don't, you might have heard of it before about the girl that went shopping in Victoria's Secret with her dead baby in her bag, which she then tried to use to also shoplift. I just, it makes me so, so sick that she's so detached from the fact that she had killed two, not one, but two of her newborn babies and just didn't give a damn, and just wanted to get rid of the body, wanted to smash it up so it didn't look like it. <sighs> okay, let's move on. Amber Craker. In 2016, Amber Craker, who was from Abilene, Texas, was 18 when she gave birth to her baby on the toilet in a home that she lived in with her parents, who she had kept the pregnancy a secret from. When she was in labour, she muffled her cries with a washcloth, but eventually passed out from the pain. When she came to, the baby was out but not moving and was still attached to the umbilical cord. She then proceeded to stab the baby, puncturing the left lung, severing the trachea, and almost entirely plunging the knife through the baby's body. She later had told police she'd done this accidentally when she was trying to cut the umbilical cord. 
After that, she attempted to flush the baby down the toilet, and failing that, she hid it in the trash, wrapped up in toilet paper so that her parents wouldn't find it. She then called for help from her boyfriend and her parents as she was hemorrhaging after she had given birth and it was getting worse and worse, and then they took her to the hospital. Craker was charged with murder and tampering with evidence, as was her boyfriend, Damien Kate. Kate insisted that he had no part in the matter, but he had told police that he was present at the birth and that the baby had been born alive and he had held it for 20 minutes. The day after they were charged, the police officers who had responded to the 911 call had named the baby Ashley and held a funeral service for her. In the autopsy report, it was proven that Ashley had been born alive as her vital organs were in good condition and she did not have macerated skin, which stillborn babies do have. Craker's attorney argued that she was mentally disabled, so she underwent a psychiatric evaluation, which did prove that she was. She was then transferred to the North Texas Mental Health Facility in Vernon for a period of 120 days. In the summer of 2016, prosecutors in Abilene convened a grand jury to decide if there was enough evidence to indict Craker and Kate on the murder of the baby. The grand jury returned with a recommendation of the charge of capital murder, which is a charge more serious than first degree murder and tampering with evidence. The following year, after Craker had completed her time in the hospital and was deemed competent again, the new trial dates were set. The trial of Amber Craker began on October 2nd, 2017 in Abilene. In opening statements, District Attorney James Hicks alleged that Craker had known exactly what she was doing when she stabbed her live-born baby to death hours after he was born, and then threw the body in the trash. Craker's lawyers, Trey Keith and Jeff Probst, argued that her confession that she gave police was unreliable, due to it being right after giving birth and under the influence of anaesthetic. The prosecution called to the stand the charge nurse who had first seen Amber at the hospital, and she recounted how she never believed her story. The doctor at the ER also took the stand, and he explained how he and the nurse, after examining Craker, had contacted the police so they could go find the missing baby. The trial ended on October 5, and the case went to the jury, and it only took five hours for them to deliberate. They found her guilty of both capital murder and tampering with evidence. She was sentenced to life in prison on the first charge, and 19 years on the second, so she will likely never be free again. And now, finally, we are moving on to the third case, which is Lindsay Lowe. In 2011, Lindsay Lowe, who was from Hendersville in Tennessee, was 25 when she gave birth to two twin boys. She hid her pregnancy from everyone and never saw a doctor. She gave birth to the first baby on the toilet, and when the baby started to cry, she held her hand over his mouth to stop him crying as she was worried that her parents would hear. She kept her hand over his mouth for several minutes until he perished. Minutes later, she would birth the second twin in the same way, and he would be in the toilet with the other dead twin. The second twin was crying, but not as loud, and she put her hand over his mouth again, just like she did with the other, and waited for him to die. He died quicker than the first twin. She then placed both dead babies in a laundry basket and covered them with towels to keep them from being discovered. Her father, Mark Lowe, discovered one of the babies in the laundry basket two days later and called the police. Officials arrested Lindsay at work and interviewed her in which she confessed to killing the babies by suffocating them. I will now read the confession that she made to a detective. The detective said, we're going to talk freely, all right? and we're going to try and make heads or tails of what's going on in a bad situation. How long did you know you were pregnant? Lowe says, probably almost the whole time. Detective says, okay, did you go to a doctor at all? She says, no. The detective asked her why she didn't tell her fiance about the pregnancy. She admitted to cheating on him with another man who turned out to be the father. Lowe says, I really didn't tell anybody. My family are very conservative Christian people, and I was just very, I don't know, I just didn't want to disappoint anybody. The detective asked about how she gave birth in the bathroom at home. She said, I didn't know what to do. I was, I guess I went into shock. I was scared. The detective said, I mean, you had to have, the baby had to come out. How did that happen? She said, just came out. 
He said, where did it land? She said, in the toilet. I just didn't know what to do. He said, so you wrapped them in a towel and you did what? She said, I just put them in that basket. I didn't know what to do. He said, what was your plan? She said, I don't know. I don't know. He then pressed low on what she did to the babies. She said, I guess I don't want to call it smother. I was just trying to keep them quiet. He said, how were you doing that? She said, just put my hand down over their mouth. He said, I know, I know, it's okay. You knew it couldn't breathe, right? And she nodded her head. He said, essentially, you know you killed the baby. She nodded her head again. And he said, you didn't want to. And she nodded her head for a third time. He said, but you did? She said, yeah. He said, they were clearly alive and you clearly killed them. Is that correct? She said, yes, sir. So she fully admitted to killing both of her babies. The trial of Lindsay Lowe began in 2013 and she was being charged with two counts of premeditated murder, two counts of felony murder, and two counts of aggravated child abuse. Prosecutors described how Lowe sought no prenatal care and bought no supplies before giving birth to the twins at home and suggested that this lack of preparation meant that she never intended for the babies to live. Her attorneys argued that she had blocked the pregnancy from her mind, saying she didn't even know what was happening when she started to give birth. Attorney John Pellegrin said that Lowe thought an organ was coming out of her when she gave birth to the first baby on the toilet and felt a baby's head and ear coming out. So that's obviously complete bullshit <laughs> that she didn't know what was going on. Like she knew she was pregnant, so she, she admitted to knowing she was pregnant. So it wasn't an organ. She knew it was a baby coming out for sure. He said that she did not understand even when she gave birth to the second twin. She was a bridesmaid at a wedding just days before giving birth and did not understand why she started lactating. Lowe somehow pleaded not guilty to the charges, but was found guilty by the jury of first degree premeditated murder. They deliberated for two hours before finding her guilty on two counts of felony first degree murder and felony premeditated murder. She was then sentenced to two life terms. Psychiatrist Dr. William Kenner testified for the defense that Lowe had blocked out the pregnancy and then due to blood loss from giving birth, she suffered from shock and delirium. Prosecutor Ray Whitley painted a different picture and presented evidence from internet searches on Lowe's phone where she searched for information on how to induce labor and pornography involving pregnant women. Lowe says she still doesn't fully comprehend what happened that night, but said she takes responsibility for her actions. I cannot explain why I put my babies in a laundry basket or what was going through my mind, she said. And there you have it. That's the story of Lindsay Lowe. And that's all three of the stories I do have for you today. I, I know, like I said, this is a very heavy one and it really hurt me to read about these things and understand why these women would do this but a lot of it largely i think comes down to the fact that they obviously didn't want to have these babies but somehow they were still so unaware of all of the things that could be done uh, rather than them killing the child there are so many other things you could do like Adoption, for example, like, there's always, like, you are always able to give away your baby if you know you really can't look after it. There's definitely something in the US that's a policy where you can drop off your baby, but instead, somehow these women were in, in denial, I guess, about, um, some of them were in denial about being pregnant. For example, it was believed that Amber Craker was in denial about her pregnancy, and therefore it, that's what led her to committing the murder. It's just, it's inexcusable though, it, it's unbelievable, and I can't believe that this actually happens, but it really does, and... It's just so, so horrible to think about 
But yeah guys, that is all I have for you today. Uh, if there's any other topics you're interested on in me making a video on because I'll probably do more stuff like this. I'll do like um, multiple cases from one uh, certain thing basically, you know, because you've got, well I mean you've got, you've got infanticide, you've got familicide, you've got neonaticide which I've covered here. Just very, very disturbing things and I will try to research things like I'm sorry I don't upload as often as maybe I should but it actually does take a really long time like you, you never appreciate how long it takes to actually research something write out a script um, and then come to the recording part and then the editing part and blah, blah, blah. it all takes a really long time and you only really appreciate it if you actually have done it so yeah I mean I don't want it to become like uh, my job because then it won't be fun anymore so yeah anyway thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon bye